Thank, uh, happy Thanksgiving week to everybody out there. And uh, David and Anka, thank you for having me here. And I really can't see who's here, but I know a lot of my clients are out there. So I want to uh, thank you for attending, especially Ron Rossway. I think you're there as well. Uh, again, I can't see everybody that's there, but uh, I know a few of you that are there. All right, so we're going to talk about risk control today. We, we call this trade size really does matter. And a lot of people talk about trading systems in terms of entries and exits, but we want to hone it down. Uh-oh, uh the sound went off. Down a little bit more because risk control. Hey, Bennett. Yeah. I think maybe we're having a little bit of a mic issue. Oh, no. All right, let's switch. Let's go to microphone number two. How's that? Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, good. Yeah, you always have to have a backup mic, right? <laughs> It's kind of like having backup internet. All right, so um, what I was saying is that uh, risk control is really an important aspect of being a successful trader. And without it, you're gonna have a really hard time because the whole premise is to really, the old adage is to let your winners run and cut your losers short. And that is really what it's all about. I mean, everybody has an entry and exit system. And do you know if you have an entry system where you're winning only about 60% of the time, as long as your payoff ratio is two to one, you're gonna be a winner. Uh, also too, if you're winning only 50% of the time, toss of a coin, if your payoff, and meaning your wins are above your losses, again, you're gonna be a winning trader. So we're gonna delve into all those aspects and talk about how you can look at your trading kind of from a new angle and see how you can fix it as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first thing I want to talk about too is invite everybody to our website at traderscoach.com. We have a, a host of uh, software tools there, including risk control. We're going to talk about a tool that we uh, have that's a very inexpensive, simple tool that you can calculate your trade size for each and every trade. So I'm going to address that a little later in the presentation. We also have day a day trading room I run. Uh, we have a yummy trades room and we have a host of educational content. So feel free to drop by the website and check us out. All right, I think pretty much everybody knows that there's risks involved in the markets. Uh, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about how to uh, help control those risks. You can't eliminate them entirely, but we can help you control them. And we're gonna talk about controlling trade risk. We also have a YouTube page and we invite everybody to join us. And I think Gene, if you could put up a link to it, it's a free page. What we do here is we usually put up a market, overall market forecast every couple of weeks. And then we also put up a couple stock opportunities uh, from our market opportunity report in here as well. So that's something you can join for free and get updates uh, when you need it. Also too, we have a uh, traderscoach.com Facebook page, same type of thing. You can join that too. And Gene will put a link up there as well. All right, most of the material I'm gonna talk about today is taken from one of my books uh, called A Trader's Money Management System. And it is all about risk control. So if you're interested in more about that, you can check out that. Maybe Gene will put a link up to that as well. I've also written three other books on technical analysis, The Art of Trading, which uh, specifies the applied reality trading system that we use, The Survival Guide for Traders, which is how to run you're trading like a hedge fund from home, and then also a form of technical analysis called Elliott Wave as well. All right, we have something free because it's the holidays. We wanted to give you something free. So we have a money management article and Gene will put the link up in the chat area for you and you can download that. And that's an article I wrote for stocks and commodities. It also has the formulas to calculate trade size. So I'm gonna run through those during the presentation but definitely download that because you're gonna to wanna to have the formulas uh, somewhere in writing for you so you can refer to those. So that's available in that stocks and commodities article. All right, let me ask a couple of questions here and hopefully I can read all the uh, chats here. But one of my questions here is, do you need risk control and money management? What do you think? Pretty obvious question, right? Anybody disagree with this statement? <laughs> All right, of course, okay? So it's a pretty 
pretty general concept. The question though is, okay, how do I implement it? That's really the question. And so one of the things you have to realize right off the bat when trading the markets is you're gonna have losing trades. Now, I, I have done a lot of counseling with traders over the last 25 years. And it's amazing to me when you get a new trader, how losses, even a couple losses in a row, really throws them off their game. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they really haven't tested their system to know how many losses are acceptable in a row. And so some of that comes under testing, but some of it comes under the realization or unrealization that they really aren't expecting losing trades. So right off the bat, there's, this is a fact. You've got to realize that some losing trades are really a normal part of trading. You're not going to win them all. Same thing with life, right? So what you want to do, all right, again, is keep your losing trades small, let your winning trades run, and develop a systematic approach to money management. Now, what does that mean, systematic approach? Well, it means basically an approach that you can apply all the time, not just every once in a while, and not just cherry picking the trades that you want to apply risk control. So it's something you need to really address all the time. And so that's really important. And that's what we're gonna, that's really what your goal needs to be here. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to calculate your trade size for each trade and how to calculate your percent to risk as well. All right, so what does money management do? It allows you to be wrong, helps control risk, takes into account that every trade can be a potential loss, separates the pros from the novices, and money management is a state of mind. And it's so true. I think um, if you have the type of belief system that you're optimistic when you enter trades based on your trading approach, but yet at the same time are realistic that the trade may not turn out as good as what you think it's gonna, then you're gonna protect yourself. But if you run into every trade thinking that that trade's gonna be a winner, you're married to it, so to speak, then you may not be apt to use risk control uh, on it and that can create the problem. So you don't wanna get married to your trade. I think that's one of the important aspects of that. And that leads to the next segment, which are important elements of money management. For example, how much do you risk on each trade? Calculating your trade risk, calculating your trade size, risk management, risk of ruin, effective stop loss placement. So this is what we're gonna cover in this presentation. All right, now everybody there, I want you to think of an experience where you suffered an excessive loss because you did not use risk control. Then I want you to ask yourself why you didn't and what did the experience feel like? And if anybody wants to share some of their comments in the chat area, feel free to do so. So just let that sink in for a minute. I think we've all experienced a large loss, especially when we first started trading. I know when, when I first started trading, I did, and it taught me a valuable lesson that I needed risk control. But what we're trying to do here in this presentation is reach you before you actually have that loss. And so think about that. Think of a trade where you may have gone into it and you didn't get out when you should. And then all of a sudden, the loss increased to a point where the loss was so big that you couldn't take it. And at that particular point, the trade became, became a hope. And a lot of times, you know, when we go into momentum trades, these are not stocks or markets that we want to be in a long time. We just want to take advantage of the momentum, which is why we went in them. So you don't want to get stuck with a stock or a market that may not be a good long-term investment. So you have to be able to get out when you're supposed to get out and not have that excessive loss. So uh, I think uh, if you go in with this mindset, you're gonna tend to protect yourself a lot better than if you don't. All right, and like this says, again, I can't drive this home enough. Healthy money management psychology begins when you truly realize that each trade's outcome is unknown. 
You know, when we do a lot of day trading, we'll have a target zone. But if you focus on each and every price bar, all right, you'll go nuts because some are up, some are down, some are up, some are down. Best thing to do is you execute the trade, put your stop in, have your target zone, and then realize that we really don't know if the trade's gonna win, but we've done everything right to possibly make that outcome reality. All right, and this is the other big thing too. Profitable money management occurs when you truly believe that you need it. And unfortunately for many, that belief does not occur until what? They actually experience a large loss. So, you know, that's the thing. We try, we're trying to get to you before you have that large loss. And I know there's some new traders out there. All right, I wanna talk about the concept of trade risk versus market risk. Um, who thinks they might know what the difference is? Trade risk versus market risk. Okay, give you just a second. All right, so, so trade risk actually, well, I'm gonna to go to the next slide because it kind of spells it out. So trade risk is actually something we can control and we do it through trade size. The account size controls your market risk. So what's the difference? Well, a market risk event is something that like a, a terrorist attack or something that can happen that makes the market move past your carefully chosen stock. And by the time you get out, you get out at a much larger loss than you thought you would based on your stock. Now, how do you control that? Well, you control it through account size. And this is why professional traders don't trade their entire net worth. They trade a percentage of it. And what you wanna do is figure out what percentage of your net worth you can afford to risk. And that you may have to talk with your financial advisor, take a look at your personal situation. It's different for everybody. But you don't want to fund an active trading account, a speculation account, with money you can't afford to risk. Because that's our only protection against market risk. So if you get wiped out or take a 30% loss, which doesn't happen much, but if you do, okay, then it's not gonna destroy you. So that's really important. Trade size is how we control trade risk. So this is what we're gonna actually be using to control each and every trade on a daily basis when we trade. So, so it's important to realize the difference between trade risk and market risk. Trade risk we can control, market risk we cannot. Okay. We're gonna talk a little bit about the risk of ruin and how to make it work for you instead of against you. In order to do that, I first wanna talk a little bit about the win ratio. The win ratio is how many trades do you win, basically, versus how many trades do you lose? And it's normally represented in a percentage. The payoff ratio is how many dollars do you make for every dollar you lose. So these are two very important concepts when talking about risk control and even trade size. So for example, if you did 100 trades and you're winning 60 out of 100, your win ratio is gonna be 60%. Pretty simple. And your payoff ratio for example, is your average winning trade divided by your average losing trade. So if your winning trades are 300 and on average you lose 100, then you got a three to one payoff ratio. And that's very good. And believe me, if you're winning just 60% of the time and you have a three to one uh, payoff ratio, you're gonna be a very successful trader. All right, here's a, um, a table taken out of my book uh, on money management, where it talks a little bit about the risk of ruin. And it's kind of interesting because it's the risk of ruin probabilities with 10% of capital at risk. So if your win ratio is 55% and your payoff ratio is two to one, then you've got a 0.2% chance of going bust is basically what that's saying. 
Now, let's take a look at another table. If your payoff ratio or win ratio is 45% and your payoff ratio is one to one, you've got a 100% chance of going bust. So the idea is, is that the payoff ratio and the win ratio are married concepts. And so when you're doing your testing or calculating your trade size or working on your risk control, you wanna take into account these two important concepts because you need to develop a winning system. And so when you test your system, you need to know what your payoff ratio is after a certain number of trades. And we recommend at least 50 trades to get an accurate reading on your win ratio and payoff ratio. All right, so that's risk of ruin. Be aware of it and implement that type of thinking into your trading. All right, so now we're gonna talk about using um, formulas to actually calculate trade size, taking into account some of these things that we already talked about. Now, the other th interesting thing, and you can ask yourself this too, is, is usually beginning traders trade with the same trade size on every trade. You know, if you ask somebody that's just started trading, how many trades, did, how many shares did you trade? 500, 1,000. How'd you calculate that? Well, I just use that every time, is what they usually say. Okay, and it, when you hear that, you know they're really not using the right methods to determine their trade size. And so this is where actually um, this information will help. So trade size is really important, and that's what we're gonna delve into. So let's talk about an example there. This is the best way to learn it. Let's say you had a trading account that's 50,000 bucks, and you were trading with a stock margin account allowing you to margin 50%. This increases your buying power, to 75,000. You trade using the 2% risk rule. Your trade entry is 26.99 and your initial stop is 25.45. Your commission round trip is $10. So then the question is what's your maximum trade size? What should it be based on that information? All right, so let's go to the formula now and actually take a look at this. So step 1 is to calculate your dollar risk and this is really simple. I mean, don't, don't think this is hard stuff. This is very simple. You take your account size and multiply it by 2%. And if you don't know what the proper percentage is, start out with two. All right, you may, if you have a very successful uh, win ratio and payoff ratio, that number can go up. All right, less successful, come and bring it down. But 2% will usually assume a 60% win ratio with a payoff ratio of two to one. So in a case like this, the dollar amount you wanna risk is $1,000. So you don't wanna lose any trade with more than $1,000. So that's the maximum amount you can lose if your trade fails. The next is figuring out your actual trade size to calculate this. And what we do is we take the risk amount, which is that $1,000 we just calculated, minus commissions, because we want this to be as accurate as possible. Divide that by the difference between the entry and the stop, which in our example was a buck 54, and that equals 642 shares. So that's the maximum amount of shares that you can trade and stay within a 2% loss percentage based on the entry, the exit, and the account size and the percent risk. Now, we have something called the trade size calculator. And this is a really inexpensive piece of software. And I'm gonna show you how to get this later in, in the session, but this will do it for you, okay? Basically, you put in your account size, you put in your risk. Here, let me just grab a marker. Account size goes in here. You put in your percent risk here. You put in the entry price. And by the way, if you're going short, you can put in your short entry price. Exit price, okay? point value to align the calculator in the stock market, it's one. If you were trading the S&P E-mini, you click on futures and put $50 in for the point value. All right, commission, $2, and the margin is 150 in this example because the brokerage, brokerage was loaning you 50%. You had a margin account of 50%. So then you hit calculate, okay, and in this example, 
it shows you 798 shares for these numbers here. So let's walk through those. Okay, here's your 642 from the other one. And then we're gonna walk you through a new example here. And there's your answer for the 642. All right, so now on this one here, I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between buying power and the amount you're risking per trade. Now, if you remember on our $50,000 example, the most we wanted to risk was $1,000. But that doesn't mean you just buy $1,000 worth of stock. It means that when the stock uh, is stopped out or whatever, that's the maximum amount you can lose. This example is going to walk you through actually what the stock cost based on that calculation. So let's take a look. Your trading account, once again, is 50,000. Your margin is 50%, that's 75,000. You trade using the 2% risk rule. Your entry is 91.49, and your initial stop is 90.23. Your commission round trip is 51.22. How much is the total cost of your initial trade with a 2% trade risk calculated? So if we go over here, all right, it will show you. And one of the things that we do here, again, is here's the calculator for 753 shares. So we're putting $50,000 in, percent risk, entry price, exit price, difference between the entry and the exit, the commission, and the, the margin. So all these figures here are put in, except for the difference between the entry and the stop, because you don't need that, all right? And the risk amount is 998, all right? And it's 753 shares. So if you take 753 shares and just multiply it by the entry price, this is how much the trade is going to cost you, 68891 So the point of this example, because a lot of people get confused when they think, okay, you're risking 2%, that I can only buy $1,000 in this example of a stock or do a trade of any type of 1000 bucks. That's not the case. What we're really saying is if the trade gets stopped out, the most you can lose is $1,000 if you keep your trade size there and you can get out at your exit price. So the answer obviously on this one is 68,000 and you'll see it in a second, 891.97. All right, let me ask a question here. If the distance between your entry and exit is closer than a certain amount, we'll just say it's 575 because we're going to show you an example, then what would your trade size be? All right, so if the distance is closer, what would your trade size be? Larger, smaller, or the same? And anybody can answer that in the chat if they want. I can't even, I can't read anybody's answers here so I apologize but okay um okay here's some coming in okay smaller okay anybody else all right well let's walk through it so in this chart this, this is just going to show you an example of an entry price at 1168.25 this is the S&P e-mini and a stop loss at 1162.25 so the risk was a raw $5.75 between the entry and the exit. So that produced in the calculator, that produced a trade size of six contracts. And what we did notice here that we have the point value at 50 right here. So the calculator was calibrated for the E-many selected futures and the maximum trade size was six on that particular example. So, to get back to that question before, the trade size would be larger, okay, if they're closer together, if the entry and the exit is closer together. Smaller if they were further apart. Because think about it, if they're further apart, the raw number between the entry and the exit is gonna be larger. So your trade size has to be reduced to account for that.
So closer you are between the entry and the exit, the larger the trade size will be. All right, so the formulas, like I said, are in this article here. So definitely download that so you have it and you can start playing around with the numbers. And it's very easy to implement. These are, this is not complicated stuff, but I'm telling you, it's gonna make life a lot easier when you do this because you can do it on each and every trade. All right, so what do you do after the webinar today? All right, well, you should be able to calculate your trade size uh, on any trade that you make. And all you need is an initial and trailing stop. You should do that as well, okay? You should always use trailing stops and initial stops. When you implement your initial trade, your exit is gonna be your initial stop loss. And once the trade starts to move, hopefully in your favor, that's when you're gonna trail stops up. All right, so trade size is calculated on the initial entry. Now, you can also add into positions as well, and you can do that when the trailing stops take the initial trade risk out of the trade. So prices would have to be higher than your original entry. But that's for another webinar. All right, so how do you do this? Okay, you can use the formulas in the free money management article, or you can um, use our trade size calculator. You can get that as well, okay? So either way. All right, so this is kind of a, a, a statement that I think is good to, to kind of, uh, you know, remind yourself of by acknowledging the good and the bad of what could happen in the markets and by fine tuning your money management system, you will be on your way to greater prosperity. So what you wanna do is you, you, you don't wanna be a downer. You don't wanna be pessimistic about a trade. You wanna be optimistic, but if you protect yourself going in, that really allows you to focus on the trade itself. And I think by doing it this way, you're protected to the downside. And so I think that will actually increase your objectivity in making trades uh, and also making uh, what you should do to monitor your current trade as well. So always use risk control, all right? That's the bottom line here. And let me go back over here. I think you got this by now. All right, so we put together a um, simple package here. We made this really inexpensive because everybody should be using it. And basically for 19 bucks, I mean, you can't even go to Starbucks uh, practically for 19 bucks. You can get the trade size calculator and it doesn't require a charting system. It's an independent piece of software. You download it, we send you an activation key, and it's a lifetime activation key, and you're good to go, all right? If we update it, you get the updates. So you really kind of, you can't go wrong with it, and it has all the formulas built into it. So that's the link, and I think Gene just put the link up there for you. So now let me open it up um, to questions here. Um, David, if you have any coming in, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of like bouncing all around here with the chat a little bit. So if anybody has any questions on this, let me know. And Bennett, while we're waiting for questions to come in, maybe you could show everyone the YouTube channel. All right, we certainly could do that. <laughs> Give me one second, I'll bring that up. I have to say, David, you have a quiet group. They don't ask that many questions. Okay, so, so here's the YouTube channel here. And um, we have a number of videos that we post weekly, okay? And usually a stock opportunity, uh, for example, you know, if you click on something like this, it'll bring you right to the video. On we'll your screen, you through, it doesn't show we'll walk YouTube you through yet. the chart in the whole nine yards. So that's a, you know, that's something you may be interested in. And and we, uh, you know, we're just started actually using YouTube for the most part. Let me just silence this thing out here a little bit. 
Also, too, your screen is showing uh, the trade size calculator, but not YouTube. Oh, really? Well, I've got it on there, so that's kind of you, interesting. You might have to stop the share and then reshare ah, that, okay, that window. It. Okay, give me one second. David, you have a huge group, but they're so quiet. They don't ask many questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Jean, we're in the sponge mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, Anka? That's a good mode to be in. Totally. <laughs> yeah. All right, can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have a bunch of videos here, and uh, this is one of the ones we just posted on, on a stock opportunity for this week. And you can see here on the far right, all right, the trade size calculator being used here uh, to calculate our trade size for this trade. So we really use it on each and every trade. And on the channel itself, um, we got a ton of videos here, and we have mar the market updates we do every couple of weeks and we go way back for quite some time. So, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a nice place to go. We got a pretty good following in there. And so uh, we welcome everybody to check that out. You could probably even play a little of your market pick from this week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely could do that. We'll post the link for the YouTube channel as well. Okay. I think we lost it. Hold on a second. Okay. Does that bring it back a little bit? Yeah, the YouTube channel is back. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can listen to it because Maybe you could listen to it through my speaker, but. I'm just fast forwarding it through this stuff. I don't think the speaker system is working with this. But anyway, uh, I think um, to make a long story short, uh, there's a lot of trades that we post in there and uh, you can check those out and see which ones are suitable for you. Well, David, I'm done. I well, I bet David could ask you some questions. We could have a little interview. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's see, were, were there any more? Um, do you have the same, uh, in, in the chat, there was a couple more questions. Um, do you have the same calculator software for options trading? Hold on one second. Um, I lost you. Can you repeat that? Oh, do you, do you have the same calculator software for options trading? Yeah, yeah um, you can use it for that as well. Um, you just set up the uh, parameters a little differently. The other way okay, you can and use that, you know, I'll tell you with options, um, David, there's two ways you can go about risk control. One is, you know, you can simply, if you do part one of the formula, you'll know how much you should be risking on each trade, right? So just don't buy if it's a simple call option or buying a put, just don't buy more than that 2% maximum amount. Uh, so if you have a $50,000 account, 2% of 1,000, don't buy more than $1,000 worth of the calls or $1,000 worth of the puts. Or if you're going to do a credit spread or a debit spread rather, or a butterfly or anything like that, just make sure the risk that you built into the option doesn't exceed $1,000. 
The other way you could do it is if you have a black souls model, you could actually take the number of shares and calculate the um, trade size based on the underlying asset. And for example, you know, if it comes back uh, 600 shares, well, that's six contracts of an option. The only thing is, is that you may be risking initially more money that way. And so you have to pay attention to the underlying asset. And when the underlying asset gets stopped out, you have to leave the trade, okay? Um, you may need a Black Shoals model to help you determine um, more precisely what the option might be at that particular point. Nothing's perfect, but that might help. Okay. And uh, what about Forex? Does uh... Forex, no. For, the calculator will not work on Forex. Oh, okay. Okay, because that takes into account a few more things. We sure. actually, we, we have it built up for that, but it's, ver it's pretty complicated to use it for that. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Anka, do you have any questions you'd like to add? No, I don't see any question. Actually, I was scrolling here and I don't see any questions. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm out of questions at the moment. So. <laughs> well, you know, risk, risk control is not that exciting. Um, you know, it's not exciting <laughs> but, uh, like, like entries and exits. Um, but, and, and what we've tried to do in this presentation is really hone it down um, so you can actually use it. If you read a lot of books on risk control, they're pretty complicated. And so the book I wrote on risk control, my whole purpose of that is to make it usable. And... I have found if you just follow the patterns that we talked about here, the concepts that we talked about here, uh, it's, it's going to go a long way uh, to solving your risk issues if you're having any. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, great presentation. Great. <laughs> oh, yeah. And great the importance of so position sizing. Yeah, uh, I emphasize a lot in my classes the importance of position sizing. I am so happy that you guys came on and did a presentation exactly on this. This is, I, in my personal opinion, I've been trading for over 20 years. Uh, this is the most important thing. This is actually what makes or break you as a trader. I agree. I totally yeah. agree. Um, you know, there's so many systems and there are lots of ways to skin the cat. Yeah. But it really comes down to risk control. Exactly. Because you could have the best system on the planet, but if you, if you do not know how to position size for the trade, then it's a lost cause. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The other thing we, we also do a lot of work in is um, risk to reward. So in other words, when mm -hmm. we take a trade, you know, exactly. you know your target zone and it has to be, I don't take a trade unless it's a two to one in my favor. Absolutely. So I'm pretty strict about that. And sometimes, um, you know, you'll look at a trade, it'll look really good, but you're just a tad bit too close to the target zone. So that risk reward is not there. And, you know, it, it, it's something we, you know, I adhere to religiously. And it, it's funny because um, a lot of people, um, don't do that. But I got to tell you, if you're pretty meticulous on that, that also is another way to really increase your, your win ratio. I agree. Any questions, guys? Anyone? <laughs> okay. I think everybody's so tired. We are having a really big full day here and, um, yeah, you're having 12 traders a day, right? Yes. That's yeah. a long day. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so this was the ninth and we, uh, yeah, we still have uh, three more great presentations to go. So Fantastic. Who's coming up next? Uh, Tony Hansen is next. I thought I saw Tony in the room. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? Yeah. Bennett, what do you think? Should Tony go on early? I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Tony, right. so much. Tony should come on and say hello. Ben, I'd like to introduce you to Tony. Tony, Ben, <laughs> I don't think uh -huh. they've ever spoken before, but um, I know Tony had her medical thing 
way back when and and we tried to be very supportive of that and we uh did a whole webinar on that so anyway uh tony are you step. there well tony hello if you can hear me she may be getting ready yeah All right, so, so um, David, this is where you need to have like a, uh, a video ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we just watched broadcast news and they were